Hi, I'm Hal Wilson from Techstart Ventures. Thanks for joining us here today. Um, Techstart Ventures is a, an investor of seed capital, um, startup and early stage technology companies are our focus. And we were investing across Scotland and Northern Ireland at this point in time. Um, we've been in the market since 2014. And in that time, we've built up a portfolio of about 100 companies, backing about 100 founders across those companies. Um, and we're actively investing, um, so the portfolio should grow north of 100 up to about 140 companies over the next two or three years. In Northern Ireland, we also run a proof of concept grant fund, which my colleague Kathleen will tell you all about um, after I've finished. Um, what we do is look for opportunities which have venture scale upside. Venture scale upside to us is, is key and it provides the founders with an opportunity to build a meaningful business of great value. Um, and we, we kind of use, if you're not comfortable with venture scale opportunities, uncapped potential, sizable market opportunities is key to what we look for. Um, foundational capital is a key phrase for ourselves. We do invest first, typically. Um, we are mindful that ambitious founders want to build sizable businesses, which will have multiple funding rounds. So we position ourselves accordingly in the cap table of the company and work with the founder to deliver on their ambitions. Founder opportunity fit is a key thing for us. So that means, does the founder have an appreciation of a, of a problem, of a set of competition um, aspects um, to a network which is helpful to them and helps others believe that they can build something from nothing in a relatively short period of time? We are active. Um, we know what the market is for terms in early stage investments, and we do offer progressive terms and valuations as part of our approach to investing in these businesses. We go early. We, we typically are the first check in. Um, and if the fit between the founder and the opportunity is great, we'll go at the idea stage. Typically, we go pre product, we'll go pre revenue, and sometimes we'll, we'll go post revenue as well. As I mentioned earlier, the, the founders are a large group of folk at the moment, and we encourage interaction amongst those individuals. So we have a community, we have a Slack channel, we encourage face-to-face -face meetings, we encourage, we call them mastermind groups, where groups of founders come together and share their experiences, irrespective of what markets they're targeting, the issues that they have to deal with in starting and growing a business are fairly similar, and we encourage peer-to-peer -peer support amongst the founder group. Um, as I mentioned earlier, we're, we're relatively modest in terms of the capital that we manage. We might invest 350 to 500,000 pounds at the initial point of investment. That typically is not enough for founders to realize their ambitions. So we proactively work with founders to try and help them get to what we call out of territory capital, access to funds with deeper capital and greater networks to help them through the next stage of their journey. This is a confusing slide of many companies. I guess what it's showing is that the portfolio is diverse. Um, the majority of the companies are software, but there are hardware companies in there. Um, there are some med tech, there's some life science companies, and there's some university spin outs. So we are generalist technology investors, the common thing being startup and early stage. This is showing the pace at which we've been investing since we started. This is new investments and follow on investments. So you can see that we are aggressive in terms of building the portfolio in Northern Ireland, Scotland. And also that we're, to get full on rounds away, we typically do it with what we're describing as other people's money out of territory capital. And this next slide shows the growth in the portfolio of other people's money coming into the portfolio. This slide is not only other venture funds, it's corporates, it's angel investors, it's uh, crowdfunding sites. But our key focus is in this next slide, which is out of territory venture capital investment, where we're looking to encourage and introduce the portfolio CEOs to relevant investors, be it in Dublin, in London, Paris, New York, um, Berlin, um, to get the right investor, the right scale of capital, the right sectoral experience and the right networks to help those companies grow at pace. These are some of the investors that we've invested with to date here from the North American market. Um, the majority of them are American, uh, one is Canadian. This next slide shows you know, the, the good number of GB and Irish venture funds that are currently co-investing with, with us in the portfolio at this time. So, so to cap, it's really about large opportunities is our focus. 
early stage tech will, will go early, as early as, the, the, as an idea stage, if there's a great opportunity and a good fit between the founders' background and that opportunity. We are mindful that we are only one part of a successful fundraising strategy for ambitious entrepreneurs, and we position ourselves accordingly. Um, and a key thing for us is to help those ambitious entrepreneurs connect to out-of-territory capital. Um, getting in contact with us is fairly straightforward. Uh, if you know somebody who knows us, no, that's the easiest way. Our website offers an opportunity to, to go in and book uh, an open office meeting, or you could build a relationship with us through our proof of accounts at Grant Fund, which Kathleen will tell you about now. Thank you. Hello, I am Kathleen Garrett from Techstart Ventures, and I run the Proof of Concept Grant Fund. Within Techstart Ventures, we have an £8.1 million pound grant fund. On a competitive basis, this fund supports entrepreneurs in Northern Ireland to help them explore the commercial potential and viability of an innovative concept. We have been running this fund for the last seven and a half years. Over the last seven and a half years, we have received over 1,200 formal applications and we have made 384 awards. The Proof of Concept Grant Fund has proven to be a really good feeder into our equity fund. Of the 384 grants that we have awarded, Techstart have invested into 38 of these companies. These 38 companies have received around £1 million from our grant fund. Techstart have invested around £17 million into these companies. But these 38 companies have gone on to receive £66 million of investment elsewhere, with 68% of this funding coming from outside Northern Ireland. Our grants come in three different forms. We have a 10K concept grant, which is awarded on a quarterly basis. We have a 35K concept plus grant, which is awarded biannually. And we have a large grant of 75K, which is awarded once per annum, and usually in partnership with a large corporate. So when we are assessing applications coming forward, applicants are scored against their peers at the time. But the four key areas that we look at are the following. We look at novelty and innovation. So we're looking for people to come forward having identified a problem or a gap in the market. They have a solution and they want the grant to help them prove that their solution will work. So their solution should be something different and novel that can be differentiated within the market. In terms of the market, we're looking for large and interesting markets. We're looking for people to have proven that they've started some market validation. So they've been out speaking to the market, they've received some feedback from potential customers and end users. Market validation like that really adds value to propositions coming forward. In terms of the founder or the founders themselves, we're looking for ambitious, backable founders. So we'll want to understand why you are the right person for this idea. Good founder market fit is really important. And the last area is the grant itself. So we'll want to understand exactly how much funding you require, what it will be spent on, what the output and the deliverable of the grant will be. So in terms of the application criteria, as I've said previously, we're looking for novel and innovative business ideas. Applicants can apply as a sole trader, a partnership or a limited company. The principal applicant must be resident in Northern Ireland. Limited companies who are applying must be registered in Northern Ireland. And if you've received Techstart fu um, investment funding previously, you wouldn't be eligible for a grant. So how the funding works. Successful applicants will agree a project plan of expenditure with Techstart. The majority of the grant has to be outsourced to an independent third party. The grants are paid in arrears, so applicants don't receive the funding up front. Once we've agreed that project plan of expenditure, we will work with you as to exactly who the money's being spent on and what the output will be. You would pay your supplier and Techstart would reimburse you with the grant. The grants can be drawn down in instalments. It doesn't have to be one lump sum at once. And if applying as a limited company, you can use up to 30% of the grant to cover internal costs with the remaining 70% being outsourced. Just from a high level, uh, in terms of eligible costs, the grant can cover the following, but not limited to these. Um, the likes of concept prototype development, market research and testing activities, market validation costs, assessment of IP, and as I've said previously, employment costs as well. 
On our website, techstartgrants.com, we have a full list of ineligible costs. Um, but just to give you an idea of what the grant won't cover is the likes of IP protection, marketing, costs incurred outside of the project timeframe, equipment, stock, and within internal costs, we don't cover admin time or project management. To apply for one of our grants, as I've said, it's a competitive process. The application form is done online. So if you go to our techstartgrants.com website, where you'll find more information on the fund itself, you can also access the Get Started button. When you click on the Get Started button, it takes you through to our online application portal. And there you can view the application form. Once completed, you can submit it by the selected closing date. In terms of the application process, all our application closing dates are advertised on our website and on our Twitter page as well. You would submit your online application form by the closing date. Once we receive all application forms, these are reviewed. We then invite all applications, all applicants in to present to TechStart. You would do a pitch to a TechStart panel and decisions are made at that stage. Thank you for taking the time to listen about our grant fund. As I said, please visit our techstartgrants.com website for more information on the fund. You can access our Twitter page at Techstart Grants. And if you have any inquiries about the fund or would like to speak to one of the team, please contact us on grants at techstart.vc. Thank you. Hello, I'm Jamie Andrews, a partner at Techstart Ventures. Um, and welcome, Mark Dowds, founder and CEO of Responsible. Uh, some background on Techstart and Responsible. Uh, Mark, you started Responsible in late 2020, uh, initially winning a Techstart Proof of Concept grant to help get the idea off the ground. Uh, in December 2020, uh, Techstart wrote the first check investment uh, alongside some really smart, relevant angels. Uh, and within 12 months, you'd raised a uh, 5 million pound seed round uh, from Barclay Sustainable Impact Capital. Um, with Techstart uh, participating in that round. Mark, tell us what motivated you to start Responsible. Um, I did a little project um, to research on end of the fashion industry, and I discovered that it was a significant polluter to the planet. Um, it had a history of slavery in the supply chain. Um, it was hurting animals. It, everything, basically, for me, it disturbed me. Uh, moved me to tears and motivated me to shift in life and to want to go solve a problem. Uh, I recognized that there, was, uh, that there was a lack of circularity in the, in the industry of fashion, is that we buy, use, dispose, and I thought if I could recreate a new financial model that would enable people to wear things for longer, look after them uh, for lo you know, better, uh, that we could actually help our planet. It's, we, yeah. we, can, we can shift and change in a positive direction the temperature of the planet if we can get to about 20% of things uh, that are kept in circulation for longer. Brilliant. So we talked about uh, you know, the incredible pace you've moved at in the first 12 months. You know, how do you think about refining your, your business proposition while moving at that pace? Um, there, there are moments it's a little bit heart-stopping, Jamie, <laughs> to <say laughs> the least. Um, it's, you know, doing a startup is a, it's an all-encompassing thing um, because you're looking at not only the, the people that you're working with, you're looking at the industry and you're also looking at the competitive landscape while trying to stay focused on a purpose and mission. So it's one of those things that becomes obsessive to... Uh, to move and optimize and to make those leadership calls whilst being on the move. It's, uh, I suppose in some ways, it's like uh, being in a race car and you're moving around and you're seeing, you, you're watching everything around you while trying to keep the thing be between the hedges. Brilliant. And are you, are you, you know, in terms of, you know, getting information from the environments that you're working in, how do, how do, how do you go about thinking about that? Are you, are you just trying to talk to everybody you meet? Yeah, it's getting in front of customers, getting in front of potential partners, and the more the more I'm, the more I'm with the the people I'm going to be working with or the pro helping those that we're going to solve the problem for, uh, then it's just, it, it, that information continuously informs. Uh, we're content. We are testing assumptions that, that we would have, so that we have assumptions that people would like to wear clothes that have been worn before. 
you know, but we and we can see that in markets and some certain trends. But there's a lot of that that still, you know, there's areas that are unproven. And so for us, we've got to get into the middle of of the of solving those problems, testing assumptions, and making sure that the that the model is right. So talk us through that, you know, formation of the early startup team. How do you think about that? Yeah, it's probably the the most fun part for me, Jamie. Um, is really finding. I know I know myself really well. I know what I'm good at, and I know what I'm not good at. And so, looking to find the people around that I can build around myself is sort of key. So the first person I went to, uh, without any hesitation, was Mitch Doust, who's my co-founder. Mitch is the COO of Responsible. Um, he is a nothing short of brilliant when it comes to finance and strategy. Um, he he knows the operations. He's on the ball, and he's able. And he's not a yes man. Yeah. So he's able to work really well with me. Um, I also then went looking for the person who helped create the the queues outside of the sneaker stores, and when when you got streetwear drops, and found Kieran Jordan who uh, on LinkedIn, uh, who was the uh, did the basically led the digital hype business for for Adidas. And so was able to attract him to join in as our, our CMO. Um, and then began to think around who could hold me accountable and also challenge me and the team around our sustainable you know, goals. And so then approached Kirsten Dunlop, the CEO of Climate Kick, uh, to really come in and join our board of directors. Um, and she has been phenomenal. Brilliant. Brilliant. So in terms of, you know, what, what as CEO, what, what do you see as your role and what do you ask other people to do in your team? Yeah, my role, I'll say it's really simple. <laughs> um, uh, my role is to make sure the company's going in the right direction and uh, to make sure I'm hiring the right people and to make sure that I've, I keep it capitalized. Uh, if I can keep those three things in order, that create that 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 gives us enough space to create a really effective culture and and then for me to be able to keep the macro of coordination of of the team uh, while watching the detail and giving them the right steer just going to move on to the fundraising side of it now so how, how did you develop a fundraising strategy and then execute on it so far yeah fundraising strategy like out of the gates is uh, what a what i what I like to do, and not everyone follows the same path, um, but what I've learned is that this is all about people mm. bu building a startup. Uh, so I, so I began to think about who I wanted from a team structure perspective, generally how much they're going to cost, and when I did the initial round, I wanted to uh, make sure that I had 18 months of a runway with a with a with a with that core team. Uh, so that was that, that was the that was the basics and. Then in the current fundraise was the, to, re, to basically gather enough of the people around me then to take it into the future uh, so that when we would receive the capital, uh, then we could, we could run really fast. Mm -hmm. Some people do it differently in the sense that they'll, go, they'll want to raise the money before hiring. I, I've a li I'm a little bit more ambitious and I like to have that team around me first. Okay, okay. And so how, when you went about thinking, you know, who to raise capital from, and how much and things, how, how did you sort of start thinking about that from the, literally from, from day one? Because you, you, you raised money very, very quickly in, in the journey. Yeah, it happened, it happened fast, um, but not without hard work. Mm -hmm. um, it, so what I tend to do is start talking to a lot, of, a lot of people in the angel community that could bring strategic value to the company. So in, some, so in going out there, I put together an advanced subscription agreement, um, which allowed me then to get an up momentum and get feedback from a group of angels and other investors, including, including yourself, Jamie, and Techstart, um, to then build that sort of follow money mm. at what, just ahead of going out for the lead because I needed a little bit of time to do that. Uh, before I was ready to be sort of prime time in front of, in front of uh, some of the other VCs, so that so it was going for that. And then when when it came to the VCs, what I was really looking for uh, was patient capital and also uh, also capital that would understand the sustainable space of which we're in. You know, currently we're not yet a B Corp, but what I didn't want to have is a 
a VC in the door that would fight that. So I wanted someone who would really help us and enable us mm. to, to, that's a specialist in the industry, which is why we went with Barclays. The, sust the sustainable impact capital is really what they stand for. It's really about the planet. And they're investing in other industries that we can learn from as well. Right. And in terms of that, you know, <laughs> you've heard us talk about it lots, but that balance of getting, you know, an early stage local investor, you know, fr from, from the get-go and then moving to thinking about other territory capital um, and all the benefits that we think comes with that. It, how did you think about that when you were building your financing strategy? Yeah, and building that, obviously bringing yourselves in early on, on the local piece uh, for me is super important because there's something that's grounding here. I, I wanted to have a Northern Ireland based company, um, but one that had a global view. Mm -hmm. um, so when looking in at capital and Barclays were interesting because Barclays are obviously in the UK, we know Barclays there, but obviously Barclays have a strong presence internationally, yeah. including North America. What I wanted to do was have a firm that would, would be able to bridge that gap mm -hmm. uh, so that I would have that international reach and to make a, to make a noise to say that, you know, we may be based here, um, but we're going to the, we're going to North America. We're going into wider Europe. Uh, so it's uh, it, it it preempts you know the Series A, so that folks know that we're we're not a small colloquial firm. Yeah, we're we're people with a big vision. Yeah. So when you think about like a potential future, you know, what do you see as the the challenges of raising those Series A plus rounds going forward? Um, number one thing, Jamie, is always people. Mm -hmm. So. Finding the people, having them on the wings and ready, having the structure to be able to scale with people. This is something I've done before. So scaling from, you know, today 25 people to, you know, to push yourselves 50, 100, 150. Uh, there, are, there are ways to do that. So build, having that structure and, and building a really strong culture and processes to enable that, number one. Mm -hmm. uh, second piece is making sure that we're optimizing our business model, where it becomes very clear to the capital that would have interest in us that they would be putting fuel on a fire. Mm -hmm. Very good, okay. And then sort of finally, you know, the big question, where do you see responsible in five years' time? The dream for me to see responsible in five years' time is that we're having a positive impact on our planet, um, that we have a culture and a company of which people want to work in, and that we are able to make money while doing good. Brilliant. Brilliant. Mark, thank you very much. Much appreciated. Thanks, Jimmy. Cheers.